Hello and welcome back to the CCNA journey with me, Ryan, and we're going to continue with section two, network access, focusing on CDP, the Cisco Discovery Protocol, and LLDP, the Link Layer Discovery Protocol. Now it's worth noting, this is uh, a bit of a snippet that was taken from the ICND one, so it just kind of goes over uh, kind of those topics as a, a review, but I do mention DTP, the Dynamic Trunking Protocol, now, that's not on the new CCNA blueprint, but I mentioned it a few times in here. If you're interested in learning about DTP, which I would recommend you should, I'll link a video in the description. But since it's not on the actual blueprint, I've taken it out this video. So again, this video is just primarily focusing on CDP and LLDP, which are on the new CCNA topic for uh, 2020 exam code 20301. For those who don't know, you can contact me here on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter or Facebook. Okay, so moving on to CDP and LLDP. So first of all, CDP stands for the Cisco Discovery Protocol and LLDP stands for the Link Layer Discovery Protocol. Notice that the LLDP has an 802 number, which is given by the IEEE. So we know that this is open standard. And since CDP has the word Cisco in it, you can make an assumption that this is a proprietary protocol. So let's see the difference between these two protocols and what they're actually used for. So starting with CDP, as I said, it's Cisco, it's Cisco proprietary. What does CDP and LLDP actually do? Well, there's a layer two network discovery or neighbor discovery protocol. Meaning if we go back to our switches. Let's say we have a switch in deployment and it has a bunch of switches configured throughout and you want to know, let's say you're on this switch via SSH and CDP is turned on. You then look at the CDP neighbors. What will happen is this switch will actually identify that there's another Cisco switch connected upstream. It will tell you what port number, what's the IP address, what's the iOS version of the switch upstream. It essentially is able to discover the directly connected devices. And you can use this to actually map out the network. So if you're an admin and you logged into a device and CDP was enabled on the links between the devices, you would be able to map out the layer two network throughout and be identify what devices are connected to where and what capabilities those devices have actually got. So from the switch, you'll be able to identify that this is a switch with layer two or layer three capabilities. So it's a handy protocol, but it's also one that opens up a ton of security concerns, as you can imagine. So as I said, it provides a bunch of information, including interface, IP addresses, and the OS version. Now moving on to LLDP. So this is our CDP up the top, the Cisco Discovery Protocol. And down here is our LLDP. So it's open standard, we know this. Because it's open standard, it can work between vendors. Now it's not always straightforward and it certainly depends on the vendor, but it does have an open standard and if both vendors support it, it can work between vendors. Now, unlike CDP, CDP is enabled on all ports by default. LLDP is disabled by default. Now, remember, just a moment ago, we talked about the security concerns around the default switch port configuration. Well, this is another concern. The port's in the no shut state. The port wants to become a trunk through DTP the port is sending out CDP information. So these are the sort of things that's really important that we disable or we shut down ports that are not being used in our network. So the thing you need to remember with CDP and LLDP is the Cisco certification is gonna be keen on making sure that you know the difference between them, the fact that one is proprietary and one is open standard, and it's gonna test your knowledge on most likely small things like the timers. So I would recommend that you know that CDP are sent out every 60 seconds. And if a neighbor doesn't hear from 
the switch or device within 180 seconds, which is obviously three times the timer, the three times the hello, it will consider the neighbor down and it will be removed from its CDP neighbors. Same is true with LLDP. They're sent out every 30 seconds and the hold down timer is 120 seconds. Now I've also got a comment down the bottom here that says CDP uses, and I've got this address. Hopefully by looking at that address, you are able to identify what address that is and what layer of the OSI model you would expect to see that. So that'd be at layer two, which is the data link layer. And this is a MAC address. And essentially CDP will use this MAC address but this MAC address is also used for a bunch of other protocols, some of which that are not included in the CSENT and CCNA, some of which are. So DTP, we talked about that. Well, DTP messages are sent using the same well-known MAC address. And inside that, we've also got VTP, the port aggregation control protocol, and UDLD, the unidirectional link detection. Now, how about configuration? CDP and LLDP are configured similar, but kind of different commands. To configure CDP, under the global process, we simply pop CD re CDP run, and that turns on CDP on all ports. And again, that's normally a default state. We can set a timers for CDP. Remember, we've got these defaults already set up, and we can change the whole timer. We can turn it off globally, or we can turn it off per interface. So a good practice with CDP is if you do want to utilize it, make sure that you're only running CDP between trusted devices. If you have a link on a switch or a device going to another vendor or supplier, turn off CDP. They don't need the noise on the, on the link and you're giving information away about your network, information that you particularly don't want to give away. If both sides are actually running CDP, you can look at the neighbors, and this will give you a brief summary of what port and what devices are on each port. And then you can look at each neighbor in more detail, and this will give you maybe the iOS and the IP addressing, and detail per interfaces. You can check the timers using the show CDP or information about a particular CDP entry. LLDP, similar again, you can configure it to run globally, but to turn it off on a per interface, you have to use the null LLDP transmit to not send CDP, I'm um, sorry, LLDP, and the null LLDP receive to not accept LLDP. So again, a little bit different to the config that's done up here, and something that you may wanna keep in mind is part of the CSENT exam. And then verifying is also very similar. You would do the show LLDP interfaces to look at the interfaces and neighbors, look at the neighbors detail, and then query a particular entry to find out more information about that neighbor. So briefly, let's go back to our switches and start off by querying the CDP. So these switches are in the default state, so I'd expect they're able to identify with other switches that I've got configured inside this network. Now, we're only working on uh, three and four, but there are essentially a couple of switches as part of this lab. We can see that there are actually, switch four has two links to switch two. It's local gig 19 and it's local gig 20, both go to switch two. You can see the hold down timer of CDP. So remember, this will decrement, and then every 60 seconds, you would expect this to be refreshed. It tells you the capabilities of the remote device. So here it says the capability is S and the capability is I. And if we look up the top at the table, it gives us an understanding of what that actually means. So the switch, or the device, I should say, at the other end of this supports IGMP and it has switching capabilities. So we can tell that it's a switch. We know what platform it is. We know it's a 3560E 
and what port on their side we're plugged into. Same is true with the entry at the bottom. We can see that there are two ports between switch three and locally switch four. The local switch four ports are here. The remote switch three ports are here. What if we add the detail on the end of it? We can see a lot more of information about our neighbors. So we know that switch two is a neighbor. Well, now we can see a lot more about the actual platform. We knew previously it was a 3560E, but now we know it's a 48 port version. We can see what iOS it's running and what image, so it's the IP base image. We can see what native VLAN it's got. We can see what duplex has been set. So there's a lot of information here that if you were pairing up with a third party, particularly you may not want them to know about what iOS version you have because then they could potentially find some vulnerability regarding that iOS and then attack you with it. If we're interested in just a particular neighbor, we can say the show CDP neighbors, question mark it, and then we can pop it on a particular interface let's say 19 and then we can hit the detail to just filter out it so you can see that only this comes back by default because as you can imagine this port, this switch has 48 ports if it connects to 48 devices that supported CDP there'd be a lot of information so make sure you know how to filter it down okay so what about LLDP let's go ahead and type in the show LLDP neighbors and it comes back telling us LLDP is not enabled. So let's go into config T and get the LLDP enabled. And now if I would expect to see no neighbors because it's off by default on all the other switches. So what we're going to do is jump across to switch four and enable LLDP on this side. And now what started to happen is the interval of LLDP packets will be sent out. And once those packets have been sent and received on both sides, they will form uh, the neighbors. And then essentially it will show in the neighbor table. So you can see at the moment, they've not formed uh, the, or they've not discovered each other essentially. So let's give it a few more moments. And then eventually when we click it, oh, there you go. It's actually got two entries. So just like CDP, you're looking at the same information. Kind of what's different here is obviously the hold down time is different because we've got different timers for LLDP and the capability is shown a little bit different. So here the capability shows itself as B, but just like before, we've got this table at the top that gives us an output of what the table actually means. And in this case, they use the terminology of bridge instead of switch. So what about the details? Well, to do that, we do the show LLDP neighbor, and then we use the details command. And in this case, it's gonna come back with a bunch of details about the neighbors. In this case, our only neighbor, which is switch three. So we know it's switch three because I've put switch three as the host name on the other side. We can see what ports and the base MAC address We can see any information relating to the iOS and what capabilities. So before we said that the B represents that it's a switch in capability. The R means that it actually can do routing because this switch can be actually layer three as in switch three, but only has the layer two capabilities enabled. We can also see what physical media capabilities or what Ethernet standard is actually supported. So we can see, for example, 10 base T, which is 10 meg over twisted pair is supported, or even 1000 base T, which is one gig over twisted pair. VLAN IDs and a lot more information. But ultimately, CDP and LLDP are achieving the same goal. 
They're finding neighbors on the links, they're querying those neighbors and giving you information to help with network discovery. You need to make sure you know the difference between CDP and LLDP and how to configure and verify both of the protocols. Okay, that's all we've got time for in this video. Just to recap, we went over the CDP, the Cisco Discovery Protocol, and LLDP, the Link Layer Discovery Protocol. So these are two kind of uh, network discovery protocols that we need to be aware of uh, at the CCNA, and we need to know the differences between them, how to configure and verify them. And in this video, we've gone over and we've ticked those boxes. We understand why they're needed. We saw the configuration, and then we saw the verification of it. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I did talk about something called DTP, the Dynamic Trunking Protocol, and that's a protocol that allows Cisco devices to formulate trunks and access ports between devices. And that's covered um, in the CSENT ICND1 series. I'll link it in the description, but it's outside the scope for the CCNA. However, it's a simple scope if you understand trunks and access, and it's worth knowing because no doubt you will run into a problem with DTP as a network engineer. So I hope this video has been informative. I'd like to thank you for viewing. And if it has been, please do like and subscribe.